Hey everyone, I have a Kingston 480 gig SSD in for data recovery. This customer says it stopped working. Now this model SSD is branded under the A400 series, which came out in 2017. And it's still for sale, and you can still buy these, and they're very cheap. But this one has stopped working. I don't know how old this one is, because I can't really find an obvious date of manufacturing on it. But let's take a closer look. So it's a SATA SSD, and we've got the main controller here, and we've got four NAND memory chips, two on each side. And the big thing that's missing here is the DRAM cache, which is common for the cheap models. They remove that so you don't get that performance, but they reduce the cost. Let's check out the biology of this SSD. So in from the SATA connector, we've got a lot of power management up here. Here we've got a LM75B, which is actually a temperature sensor. And then we've got the main CPU of this SSD. And it's a Kingston CP33238B. Well, guess what? It's not a Kingston CPU at all. It's just a rebranded Fison S11. And these SSD controllers are common because they have a turnkey firmware. And all these little brands and labels can buy a Fison from Taiwan and they can program it and configure it to whatever specifications they want. So the Fison S11 is a SATA CPU. It can be configured to have a DRAM cache or not, which this one is, is a DRAM cache-less SSD to make it cheap. Um, and they can be configured from about 120 gigabytes up to two terabytes. So with this SSD connected to a SATA power source, it draws about 550 milliwatts at 5 volts. So you can see here on the power input, there's no connection all the way along here. So no 12 volt, possibly a ground. You've got the 5 volt input back to ground. And then we have our 3 volt. Looks like there's lines and electronics that can be installed for 3 volts, but there's just nothing on this one. So it solely relies on 5 volt input. So from the 5 volts input, I'm just going to probe around and see what we get. We've got 5 volts all here. This is possibly a ground side. Yes, it is. A little diode goes to nothing. Um, we've got a chip here with 5 volts going into it. And what do we got on the back here? The back here, we come out at this pin here. This side, okay, yeah, this side here. Let's call that 2.5 volts. So on the back side, we do get 2.5 volts coming out of this. That might be for the NAN memory chips to power them. Uh, something over here for these this chips. I can't find the input side or what this does. Let's just probe around the caps. 5 volts. So we still got our 5 volt main power supply. Oop. I think I just saw 3.3 volts. Okay, so up here we got 3.3 volts. 3.3 volts is starting to come down here through this resistor and it looks like it's who knows where that goes so it looks like we're getting 3.3 volts around here 2.5 3.3 volts 3.3 volts is our common logic voltage to probably power the CPU and the memory so we've got a big capacitor here. This might be feeding our voltage in. 1.8 volts. And up the top here, we've also got some electronics. ET4, a little six pin thing. So not sure what that is. Nothing much happening there. Let's check this coil. 
Okay, it's got 1.8 volts. So there's 1.8 volts up here for something. 5 volts coming in, so it looks like it's getting 5 volts in and driving 1.8 volts. So I've got the SSD connected to my special test software and we've got the Kingston Fison. It's come ready immediately. We've got a utility so it knows the controller name and it knows it's a Fison. Kingston A400. And if you look up here, we do have the full capacity, 480 gigs. But what we don't have is the correct Kingston model number. So this to me looks like it's in some kind of fault mode where it's giving SATA firm S11. S11 is the Fison controller chip. It does have the serial number. So let's load this up and let's see if we can talk to this SSD. So we've loaded the test utility for this SSD and straight away I can see the build time now. So it was made in February 2017, so it's lasted about five years. We can load the smart table, the self-monitoring and reporting table, um, and we do have bad blocks. So let's see if we can access this SSD in its current state. I don't think we will be able to, but I'll just check. No, and goes busy straight away. Oh no, we do have some access. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's losing readiness and going busy, so it's becoming unresponsive as I try to read this SSD. I'm not sure if it can actually read any usable data yet either, so it should have detected all the um, file systems. So I'm just trying to look at the data area of this SSD and I, and I don't think we have access to any data. In fact, everything I kind of look around on this SSD, whether it's at the front or at the back, seems to be all zero filled and seems to be blank. So I'm confident this SSD in this current state is not working. We need to look for a solution. So I'm going to upload some firmware to this SSD and see if we can start communicating with it. It's already detected the firmware version that it has on it, so we're going to upload a copy of that. Okay, we've got to connect to a special piece of hardware. Back in a second. Okay, let's try that again. So it can switch it in the safe mode programmatically via the SATA port. And we have been able to upload firmware. So we're going to create a translator now with the firmware uploaded. And the translator is going to convert the physical location on the NAND memory chips to an LBA address. Something that we need to read to see the data. So now that we've uploaded a copy of the original firmware to this bricked SSD, and we've recreated a translator. We've got the capacity. We should be able to see this working now. So I'm just going to see if I can load a file system. And already much better. Yes, and there it is. So we've got the Windows recovery and also we've got the Windows file system here. So we have access to this drive again. And there it is. So we will create a map of all the user's data. So the good news is we do have access to this data and I can start to image it. So there it goes. Um, we're getting a reasonable speed, three megabytes a second. I think that's because of the virtual translator we've created. So let me show you why this Kingston SSD A400 failed. Well, it's in the user manual that comes with it. It tells you why it's going to fail. And if we go here and scroll down, we're looking for a little piece of information. Okay, features benefits. It's fast. It's rugged. It's got multiple capacities. It's ideal for desktops and notebooks. We still need to keep reading to find the answer. Specifications. There's your form factor. It's SATA. 
comes in different capacities. Uh, here's your performance. 500 megabytes read and 450 write. Still looking for this clue. We got a temperature here. Operating temperature. No, no, no. Vibration. No. Well, life expectancy. Yeah, kind of. One million hours. So it'll only last one million hours. I don't know what that is in days or years. Someone do the math, please. Warranty support. Limited three year. But here's the answer we're looking for. Total bytes written. TBW. This is the 480 gigabyte version. And it can only have a total lifespan. Total bytes written of 160 terabytes. So once you go over 160 terabytes, the memory on this will wear out. It's not an endurance model. It's a cheapy model. So guys, that's a wrap up for this video. I am going to get all the data back for this customer. They'll be very happy when I tell them in the morning. If you need SSD data recovery, hit me up and I'll leave some links in the description. I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one.